All right, so this is going to be my attempt to record the start to end of rebuilding one of these bearing carriages, bearing blocks. So this is the one. It's really greasy, and it's got wood chips. It's got aluminum metal debris in it. It's a real mess. So tools I'm going to use. So you need some screwdrivers, Allen keys. I have this uh, small little dental pokey thing. This is this becomes pretty useful. I'm gonna put this nipple on one side because this one has bolts on both sides. Uh, obviously, you're gonna need some grease, and what else we got here? I'm gonna use an air compressor, and uh, I'm not gonna clean these uh, these ball bearings like super clean and get everything off them. Uh, I don't really see the point because they're just going to fill up with the crud again eventually, but I'll get them pretty clean. So first things first, take off one side. The uh, bearings, they don't really fall out very easily. So you don't really have to worry too much. As long as this metal guide, whatever you call this, as long as that's in place, it's really hard for the bearings to fall out. So I take this off. Uh, these longer bolts here, uh, there's those ones, and then you knock off this. There's some shorter ones, so you, you just have to keep in mind. The shorter ones hold this plastic piece in. Most of the work of uh, rebuilding these things is cleaning. Like It doesn't take a long time to uh, put everything back together and put the bearings in and stuff. So this comes out generally one of the metal guides stays on one side, and then one stays on the other side. But I just take it all completely apart. I don't really see the point of trying to keep them together. On this side, bearings can get stuck through this little loop. So best to have some kind of little pokey thing to go all the way around to make sure you're not losing any. So that's one side out. Make sure you don't have any bearings stuck in the holes or anything. Put that off to the side.
So you can see already the kind of debris we have. Let's grab this uh, top one here. So lots of metal chips and debris and stuff that we got to clean out. So the majority of the work of the, doing this stuff is cleaning. So I'm not sure if I'm going to record everything because it's just it's pretty simple to clean these things. Just time consuming. Um, some of the intricate parts like this one. So it's hard to just kind of wipe these down. So an air compressor works really good just blasting all the crap out. Same with the uh, other side. The bearing raises the shiny things you see. Those are the most important things to get clean. So the bottom one here, it's all shiny. Top one is not because it's not the ground surface that the bearing rides on. If I clean that one, so on this side, on the on the top side, let's see if I can get pick up on the light. Well, yeah, it's hard to see. But yeah, one the the bearings tend to at least in these uh, these HGW ones. They uh, they're not fully down the center there. I'm gonna go give this a quick air blast. So cleaning these little holes out here. Just twist some paper towel up. All right. Next thing I do, which is not necessarily necessary, I just clean all the surfaces off, all the machine surfaces.
Okay, one part clean. So there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, what I'll do is, and also there is those parts over there. I'm gonna rebuild one side and then that way we can uh, put all the bearings and stuff in. So it's all screws in it. Okay, I'm going to take these parts over to the air compressor and uh, further blast away all the crap on them. Here's the result. Yeah, just a bit of more paper towel just to get them a little bit better and then they're, these pieces are good. The surfaces that touch uh, the bearings are the most important, obviously. Everything else, just I don't really, really think it really matters all that much. It's not going to make a difference. Like this one there. Okay, now it's just going through the rest of these components, like this one, and just clean everything off.
all these small metal parts are all stainless steel, so they're not going to rust on you. But you just got to watch out for the the body here because this thing's just made of steel and it'll rust. If you're wondering, this little bearing here, if I can pick it up, this one came out of the previous bearing carriage, so it got loose. So what I'll do is uh, I'll probably put it back in, or if this one's missing one. I find these things, they don't have enough bearings regardless. Like they're always like one bearing short, so I might put in this one instead. I'm just going to put it in for now. These little rubber seals have these little ridges in them and they're kind of annoying to clean. On these ones, the uh, the rubber seal is right here that make contact, so that's the most important part to get clean.
So it's got a little chunk of aluminum. There. So I'm using this little dental tool to clean out this little ridge thing here. This one's really dirty, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna give these two pieces a blast with the air compressor just to get rid of all the other little crap like that chunk of aluminum there and stuff. So just give me a sec. So the keen observer of you will notice that I'm slowly removing everything that's not bearings in this and I'll clean the bearings last. So you have uh, four long and four short. Okay, I think that's everything. Looks like it. So you could uh, use like a degreaser, you could use WD-40 for all this stuff, but a lot of that shit really smells and you know, gives off VOCs and everything. So I don't really wanna do that and smell everything up. So I'm just gonna use oil and that'll just help break down all of the gunk in here, all the grease and stuff. And you could very well just degrease every part if it's if you're looking for like a super clean bearing in the end. I really don't think it matters all that much. As soon as you uh, start, uh, at least on a CNC machine, uh, your rails and everything that's going to pick up all the crap um, soon after anyway. Okay, so everything's covered in oil now, and I just go with a cloth and just pressing and rolling them all. You're going to loosen everything up. All the grease is going to come off and either get stuck to the you know, paper towel in this case or the bowl. 
and you can see here so this starts picking up a lot of the crap and a lot of the little aluminum and steel chips and everything so you just roll this around nothing fancy the only thing you gotta watch out for is when you pick it up you don't lose a bearing and that's how I lost the one over there uh, it must have come loose with a paper towel so if you have it folded like this where there's no seams you won't get a bearing stuck in there A lot of metal chips and everything. sure I don't lose any bearings. Oh, another thing, uh, if you're uh, going to be grinding or facing and smoothing these surfaces, you're going to use like a some kind of abrasive like this disc. It's not a good idea to do this around any of what you're doing because like this stuff will uh, eat down and um, like any of this dust gets in there and it's going to degrade everything really quick. So don't do what I do. I just can't film it any other way. Shit. Lost two bearings, so I gotta find them. Okay, I found them. We'll try not to lose the rest. So everything's clean, got the bearings in there, we got the, some other pieces over here, and now it's the assembly part. Good idea to put some grease on the bearing races. That way it just holds everything in together. You don't want to put a lot in, and you'll see why in the when I get to it. Just enough to get all those surfaces in there uh, greased. And then also this back piece here. It's a little bit of grease in there too. Primarily just so it doesn't rust. When you're going through the setup, uh, go through and use new paper towels so you don't contaminate everything because you're going to need them anyway for this stuff and you don't want to be putting crud back into everything.
piece goes on there. Do the second one. Okay, so this one. This one goes on like that. And then use the shorter screws. One there and there. Okay, so to know which way this goes in, there is a bump as I bump the camera. There's the profile, so see it come it comes out and then goes down. So that piece goes on the bottom and it fits into a little slot right there. And then you can see the angle it makes up the uh, the top part of that race for the, the top left channel of the bearings. And I'll put the second one in. In these parts, so one side has a, uh, I guess, a brass side, and then you want the rubber side to uh, go in, and it'll fit into this. There's a little channel on the top, on the far right corner, and then it goes in. So now all the pieces for one side is done, and now we need to put the bearings in. And because this side has been screwed down, it's not going to come loose. So the way I'm going to do it, let me get a pokey thing out. Uh, so there's four holes, one there, one there, and then on the other side. And I'm going to put the bearings down those, and they're going to fall all the way down and then pressure pushing them down is going to push them back up the the races. So I'm going to fill one side fully until the bearings come out so they are flush on the top. Same on that side. I'm going to do that for every side. And the uh, little amount of grease that we put down the races is enough to, you know, so there's something in there. But if we pack it in too much, it's just gonna, all that grease is gonna come out. So it, it's better just to not put too much in there. And then once the once all the bearings are in, it's you can repack and start pushing uh, more grease into them. I'm not counting or anything. I am just going to pack up one side until it gets to the top and not worry about, you know, trying to keep track of exactly how many go on which side.
and I'll see if I can get the close up of this. So you can see the bearing on the bottom, and once I put one into the top and push, they start getting pushed up. And they're also pushing the grease out of the way. So too much grease is just gonna make a mess and unnecessary. And as long as these uh, these metal stainless steel guides are in there, you're not gonna have to worry about the bearings falling out. As long as this guide is roughly aligned to how it should be. And one more on this side. So if I just put my finger on the top, my thumb. So this side is fully packed. The bearings on the, the left and the right are at the same level now. And I can I have a lot more bearings in there. So I'll just go through and do the rest. So now this side is on equal height and one little one popped out so I'm just gonna push it back in so that's one full side done I'm risking losing bearings by trying to get a decent camera angle. So if you're doing this, I would just have a have a bigger bowl and have the whole bearing carriage lower just because the ungreased bearings, they can bounce around and they can bounce out. little bit of grease it's because they're falling out on me and then one more on this side
almost lost one on the other side. I'm gonna put this down and just grease up the ends of everything just so I don't lose any. I'm risking losing everything with the, trying to get these camera angles. I think one last. So they're all equally filled up. And there's a few bearings left in the hole, in the cup. So these are gonna go on the other end. So I'm just gonna put this off to the side. And I will take this one and we're going to put bearings into the outside holes and they're going to get pushed around and it's not going to be enough bearings i found doing this to fill them all up uh, what we will be doing is getting a bit more grease and put a bit of grease in these holes so the bearings don't come loose and fall out on you So in this case, I would uh, think about how many you're putting in. So I go around and do one bearing on all four sides. And then just do a second bearing and just keep on going until you fill it up. And in this case, the uh, lost bearing on the other carriage, it looked like that one had a full set of bearings, and this one didn't because now I have four bearings left. So I'll make this one have a full set on this side. If you're rebuilding these things, it's probably best to, uh, if, if you're gonna replace bearings, then to yeah, have, have bearings and that way you can just fill fill this section up. And there's probably, uh, like this is probably the ideal amount because you'd want to have them, you'd want to have a bit of space between the bearings as they're rolling around. So it's kind of like uh, if I were to put one more bearing on this side, it would push this side up and, but then there wouldn't be any gap. So I think this is probably ideal. One bearing shy on all of the uh, the loops and bearings. So the hardest part now is to join these together because we have to get all of these uh, uh, these metal guides and everything matched in and 
fit into this side. And because we've closed the other side and there's it's screwed down, we don't have to worry about that side coming loose. I'll attempt to do it in this bowl so it's you can get it on camera. Yeah, and I did it on the first shot. It's not supposed to be that easy, so it could take you 10 minutes to do that. It depends on how how well everything is there, but it, yeah, it's doesn't normally come that easy. So the two shorter ones, they go in those two holes. Once that's in there, you're you're safe. You're not going to lose bearings uh, very easily. I'm sure you could if you really tried, but you don't have to be so concerned now. So yeah, next piece is this. So it's got a, a, a metal side on one side and then the rubber on this side. So the rubber goes on the other side and then it rests on these little plastic divots. And then this one gets the longer screws. All the threads of this is going into plastic, so I wouldn't be uh, torquing this stuff down very hard. I'll put this grease nipple in on this side. Do it by hand for now. Last thing I would suggest you do is get a bunch of grease on a finger like that and then put it onto the uh, bearings on both sides and rub it in. And I think this should be sufficient for greasing it for the first time. And that grease is going to work its uh, way up. It'll work its way around to the, the bearings on the inside. Last step is to clean it off. So you don't need all this grease on the inside there. There's really no point. It's just gonna collect crud again. So you give it a little wipe down. And then basically any, any surface, the grease on the rag is gonna, you know, touch all the metal parts of the casting so stop it from rusting
And that's it. So until I put them back on, I'm just gonna put it onto a uh, rail. Just to keep track of everything. Bit. This will get all the grease uh, through to all the bearings, and that's that's it for a little final step. I like to clean off the end of all the excess grease. And that's the end of this video. That's how I uh, clean out and rebuild these bearing carriages. Hope uh, you find it useful and interesting. And I uh, will see you in the next video.